Hello everyone and welcome to TFYLP, Transformers for Your Listening Pleasure, episode number 249. Uh, we are doing a pre-record tonight because uh, both uh, myself and uh, Brett, well Brett will probably be available uh, by the time this airs, however he's having computer issues. But my computer sucks. Yes, <laughs> he's having computer issues and that's why we had issues a couple episodes ago. Uh, cause I was not, not available and he tried to host and well, those of you who, uh, who follow the show know what happened, but we got the episode finished and it's available here on YouTube. Uh, and it's also up on the audio download. So if you haven't checked that out, oops, I've got the wrong thing showing here. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, if you haven't checked that out, go ahead and check that out, uh, uh, either, now and then check it come back here or you can check it out after the show whichever is best but uh tonight we have uh myself uh Deron land aka weird wolf along with me is headmaster don hey buddy and you heard him earlier megamus that would be me now, hopefully very soon uh proto man will be joining us uh but uh uh, he's stuck in traffic and is running uh, rather late, but Don needs to get off of here uh, um, uh, rather soon, so uh, so we decided to start sooner rather than later. We could have wa- waited because, I mean, that's, it's not live, but, you know, that's just yeah. the way things are. You yeah. know, Don has to go to bed and do things like sleep and, you know. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> I, I'm, I have to be up at 3 to be at work at 4, uh, so I don't have a lot of choice in the matter, unfortunately. Yeah. You know what that's like. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> but uh, check out our sponsors over here at the uh, the well. It's to my to my right, I guess. Whichever the way, uh, way they are here on the screen. Uh, CapturePrey.com, great toys, great prices, great service. CapturePrey.com, where you can save even more on orders of one hundred and fifty dollars or more with free domestic shipping. Uh, CapturePrey.com, great toys, great prices, great service. Also, MegatoyFan.com. You can check out MegatoyFan at all the popular robot and toy conventions year-round, such as TFCon, both Canada and USA. And uh, coming up here at the end of June, he's going to be at Pete's Robot Convention in uh, uh, in Covington. So uh, uh, check him out there. I'll, I plan on being there on Saturday, so if you plan on going... Uh, I should be there on Saturday. I can't make it on Sunday, or I mean, I'm sorry, on Friday because this, you know, work thing, you know. Yeah, but but the way I look at it is, if you come by on Saturday and you find me, and then you find Duron, um, let us know, and you know what, we'll give you something, give you a little surprise. Make sure you mention TFYLP and how much you love it, and how much you like to like, subscribe. Sub- I'm, I'm going to subscribe ruin, and share. Yes, I'm, I'm. I'm going to ruin the surprise right now, and it's going to be a big, nice, wet kiss from Brett, right on the lips. So you will get two surprises, <laughs> two. All right. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but uh, check out Mega Toy Fan. Maximize your collection while minimizing your costs at MegatoyFan.com. Also on Facebook, so check him out on there. Uh, also we, and I keep there, I, uh, Brett, there I go again. Also, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, correct. D- stop. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> you, you've Last already, you've already you started stay. it. You've already started it. Correct. No. Correct. Okay. No. 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 <laughs> uh, if you, uh, if you're also into, uh, hot, uh, hot, hot lava, you know, if you're in hot lava, you're, you're, Jump. Just, you're just going to be dead. That's all there is to it. Jump. <laughs> Don is just like, what's happening? I'm just going to sit here and look good till y'all finish. Well, that's debatable. I, I can keep do trying. That. Don, you're about as sexy as a Supreme Class Cheetor. Oh! <laughs> I'm going to take my... Speaking of which... <laughs> And I'm going to leave. No, 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 no. Speaking on, of which, I'm still waiting for people to send me those Supreme Class Cheetors. I will love to have them to okay. send them to Don. I still have one thing you ain't got. Best Batgirl ever. Ha! Huh? I'm not into Batgirl. I, you know what? I was going to go some other way with that, but I'll, okay. 
you got it. <laughs> but anyway, you're, you're, if you're you if you're into uh, really hot uh, mix uh, mishmash uh, t-shirts that's got uh, really cool stuff on them, like uh, you know Godzilla and Trypticon. Uh, mishmash here and like the one that uh, brett has on there the uh, back to the future delorean transformer uh yeah you know, uh, stuff like that um check out ripped apparel at ripped and whenever you check out where it says coupon code or promo code use the code tfyop pod all capital letters uh and it will give you 10 percent off on your entire order because awesome. why not it will save you money yes Save money by listening to the podcast. Why not? Save money and live better. Yes. That's right. And if you really love us and what we do here on TFYLP, uh, uh, you know, it, it's not free to keep the uh, uh, keep the lights on around here, keep the keep the show going. We, uh, we need your help. Uh, and uh, we do that through our Patreon at patreon.com slash TFYLP. Uh, Want to send out a great big thank you to everybody that continues to do that every week. Month. absolutely uh i mean without you we couldn't continue uh and it's it is imperative that we have help from uh from month to month uh, just just remember that the, the the patreon page pays for uh supplies and like computer equipment and of course the day-to-day -day bandages needed for don from massey yes Yes, I, I send him a dollar twenty-five every month. That way, Absolutely. he can buy some Johnson and Johnson band aids. Band aids, because band aids are stuck on Don because Don stuck on band aids. I think he is. You could be a spokesman. You know that. You could make money that way. I think he could. I think he could. Well, I'm, not just, I'm just not. I'm not just a client. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a, I'm a whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm transferring whatever. top spin. I'm having fun. I don't know, but so far I was okay on both things. I can see you doing a spokesman for both. The hair club for men and Johnson Absolutely. Johnson okay, moving along to the now, wait a minute. <laughs> now, here's the funny part. I have everyone, no comment about his hair. but me. I'm sorry, but, you know. I choose to shave my head. Yeah, whatever. This is mine, okay? Yeah, and I and I choose to hide it. So, what's your excuse? Yeah. Moving along. <laughs> but you know, there's different tiers at uh, at the Patreon dot uh, com slash tfylp. Uh, it starts at a dollar and goes all the way up. Uh, so you know, whatever whatever you're a bit, whatever you're able to uh, to help us with, uh, we thank you for it. Um, yeah. and, and, and all serious, serious guys, the, you know, the reason we're asking is because free software can only carry you so far, and, and it stops. <laughs> Yeah, and luckily we have got to the point where we are successful enough. It's it's kind of an odd, it's kind of like an odd success. We've gotten so successful and so popular, the free stuff don't cut it anymore. Hmm. So, so what I got from that is we're we're so like Aussie that we are loved and hated at the same time. That we can make money and need money at the same time. So there you go. And, and like Ozzy, like we're also Ozzie. Ri riding the crazy train, and occasionally Don bites off the head of birds. Well, or at least Massey. <laughs> they were good. Live on yeah. stage. No, I'm no, no, no mem Memorex I'll, on stage. I'll pay for that. Let's see it. <laughs> anyway, at any rate, you mean right along. Uh, tonight we're we're talking about uh, a couple uh, uh, really uh, hot topics uh, right now, um, and they're really hot topics right now, but they're kind of recurring topics. Um, if you kind of look at the base argument for both things, uh, they've been around. The arguments have been around for uh, quite some time. Uh, first thing we're going to be talking about uh, very recently, uh, Hasbro or I'm sorry, Takara, announced that they are putting out an official Masterpiece Sunstreaker. MP39 will be Masterpiece Sunstreaker. Well, this raises a question uh, for those of you like like myself and like Don and like, like Brett here. Uh, we've all got an unofficial version of Sunstreaker. I've got Bad Cube Sun Surge. Uh, I think Don's got Sun Surge. Brett, for whatever reason, picked up uh, Omnigonic Spinout. But you know awesome. he's he's what? crazy, so 
you know, just well, now, like we said, he's he's riding the crazy train. I was tempted so. by Omnigon, Omnigonics until I saw some QC issues with the figure, and I figured, now I'll go with Bagu. You know, everybody is so fixated on asses and everything, and they like the ass of the car better than bad cubes, and they bought it because of that. And I'm like, I, you know, I don't care what it looks like from behind. You know, <laughs> it, you know, as long as he has a decent-looking car mode and looks right in robot mode to me bad cube fits that but that's not the argument we're having tonight uh the argument is is um now that there's an official version of the character that has been announced uh is it time to uh fire sale the ones that uh the the, the unofficial ones that we got uh you know, i'm i'm of the of the thinking that i'm going to keep my sun surge because it's it's a really great toy uh, but I'm also going to pick up the official Masterpiece Sunstreaker because I really like Sunstreaker. I'm a Lambo guy, so I, I really like Sunstreaker. So whichever one looks the best in car mode, uh, I'm going to put one in car mode and display it like that. Um, but, you know, not a lot of people are going to do that. Uh, a lot of people argue that, well, I don't have the space. What's the point in having two versions of Sunstreaker? Uh, you know, there's there's different arguments for that. And this argument has been around uh, for so long. Um, I think this is something that, uh, that we can talk about that can help people later on uh, down the line. You know, I'm sure it's going to happen again. It happened with Inferno. It's happened with Masterpiece Megatron. Uh, you know, it's happened time and again. I'm sure it's going to happen again. Uh, there's rumors that we're getting a jazz eventually. Uh, you know, I I would be very happy if they got that license. You know, and I'm I'm happy with my uh, Make Toys downbeat. I'm happy with my Make Toys Hellfire. I got that instead of Masterpiece Inferno. But do right. do people sell? Why should you sell, uh, Brett? Why 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 should you sell? Your third-party toys <laughs> to replace. Oh crap! Um, I was really hoping you would do this by a case by case basis, but well, in general, because if we do a case by case, then I mean, there's, you're all you got a million place. cases. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I picked it's called Spin Out, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But right. Omnigonics. Yeah, I did, and, and I really, really like him, and I think it. If you take him and you take the G1 toy and you put them next to each other, I think it close represents that toy. That's why I picked him. Now, does that mean that when the official one comes out, I ain't going to like it better? No. Um, give you a perfect example. Um, Apollyon. I picked up Apollyon. I love Apollyon. Um, do I have Apollyon? Yes. Why do you have Apollyon? Because no one would buy it. Yeah. So I still have it. So I can't see myself buying the official Masterpiece Megatron. It's the truth. Um, and you I don't see the right point in owning to, two, right? Huh? You don't see the point in owning two versions of the same character. Well, I'm, I'm going to go right to the point to where the biggest problem we have as collectors, and we've said this before, is that we're really, really picky. So when... What's it called? Uh, Downbeat. Mm -hmm. Downbeat comes up, and I jump on it, and I buy it, and I love it. And there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this damn thing. I love it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love it. And when the official one comes up, does it mean I'm not going to buy the official one? No. It just means that at the time, this is what I wanted because I'm really picky, and I want it now. So I bought this one. Um. And I'm horrible with third party names. Uh, Trailblaker. Uh, that is uh, Teragus, uh, the uh, uh, Ocular Max version. All right. I love this one. I got the hoist. I love them both. I'll keep them uh, until something better comes along. That's the uh, the other one. Uh, there was an article from Takara, and I believe they are actually working on Trailbreaker and Hoist right now. I know is, they that, are. is that what they I'm said? I'm looking at those two, and I'm like, these are pretty damn good these are good mm -hmm. they they stand well they look aesthetically great all the way around and i'm like hasbro that's fine i'll buy your stuff 
when you show me it's better than this um with jazz and don you'll agree this is amazing yes i mean it's amazing it's this is jazz this is what i saw in the cartoon back in the 80s and until you show me something better this is it yeah. and and that's fine now my opinion yes we are all fickle yes we want the best thing and we want it now does that mean that we're not going to sell our spin out uh what was it called deep what the uh, downbeat. downbeat downbeat uh does that mean we're not going to buy uh sell those deep no. throat yeah we're gonna deep throat yeah, yeah. <laughs> don what'd you say oh never mind all right so it, it's okay um we're fickle uh don you and i both love and i know this for a fact we love bruticus mm -hmm. and we talked about what was the best bruticus to come out we loved it what was it called oh <laughs> think, think. i don't remember which one because i mean i've got the g2 one i've got war Patron, i've got the fans Warbatron. project up yeah, I've got the fans project upgrade version. He's what no, right. he's he was wanting more Patron. That's the answer he wanted. Was, okay. <laughs> We're talking third party here, Don. Damn it. There you go. All right. So you had Warbatron. Uh great. Well, now they just knock off that and made it bigger. So I'm like, ooh, bigger is better. Better is good. Maybe. All right. So now they're talking about an official third party, or not third party, but an official combiner so maybe they'll do bruticus later does that mean that i'm going to get rid of my warbertron could be but right now that's my Default. that's my uh bruticus for right now so my point being is is whether you have it's all over there but if you have official non-official third party third party three party whatever you know it doesn't matter if that's your representation of that character right now that's great. Does that mean that's what it's going to be tomorrow, next week, next month? No. You upgrade. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, to be current in this uh, fandom <laughs> means you have to spend money, which means that you have to get the next most current thing each time. Am I a big uh, advocate of that? No. There's some stuff that I have. Like I said, I have, I still have a Polyon. Could I buy the official Megatron? No. I'm happy with a Polyon. Um, I'm happy with him. So until you give me something that is so much better that I have to, I am mean, compelled to, I'm okay with going with what I have. But as far as collect, uh, collecting goes, yes, it, it costs money. It really does. So, what? a long thing about that, to make it the short, is is yes, I do official. Yes, I do third party when it's aesthetically pleasing and when it's financially viable. What's your thoughts on it, Don? Well, you, I think you have to look at it from a figure-by-figure -figure basis as well because the problem is that everyone has different favorite characters. Mm -hmm. Trailbreaker has always been one of my favorite characters. I can't. It's like, it's like tracks and Cosmos, you know, alternators Cosmos. But uh, we never. I've been looking at the third party figures, and up until the X Transbots showed off their Trailbreaker and Hoist, I did not really like any of the Trailbreakers. I liked a bit of this one. I liked a bit of that one. The vacuum engineering was a nightmare, but it looked. I didn't have a problem with it. I picked, Another, up, I picked up Speed Bump. Now, which one is that? That's uh, Bad Cube, uh, Speed Bump. Bad Cube. And bad right. cube yeah. I, I agree, which is why I went with these two guys here. Yeah. But I, I, I thought the overall aesthetics was better. I'm sorry to, to interrupt, Don, but go ahead. But, you know, I have seen the X Transbots, uh, Aegis, and their Hoist, who I can't remember the name, and it looks great because it, it's simpler, but it's it has the look. Uh, <laughs> For Inferno, for Inferno and Grapple, I mentioned, mentioned this a few months ago. I went with Hellfire and Wrestle because the chunky box bot aesthetic 
to me, fits the characters better than the sleek, stream, streamlined versions we got from Hasbro for Inferno and Grapple. Also, I, also I got them both for $80 new in the box, which is only about $30 more than what Inferno sold by himself at most places when he came out. So I'm happy. Am I getting art fire? Yes, because I don't mind that art fire being this sleek look because it's art fire. He doesn't really have to look like a certain way to fit my mental canon as long as he looks good. And I think and, and I do want one of this Inferno grapple mold. But the thing of it is, it's like the Sunstreaker. I like. It took me forever to find a Bad Cube Sun Surge because they were sold out most everywhere else. I actually bought the Ages 3 and Up display model they kept in their store because no one else had any in stock and there was none available for less than $150 on eBay. So, because again, we didn't know what Sunstreaker was going to do. Would I like a Sunstreaker? Yes. But I have a perfectly fine representation of Sunstreaker on my shelf. I got them for around $100 shipped, which was about the going price compared to the $150 you were seeing on secondary market. And Sunstreaker is $120. He has less stuff. Well, that's a placeholder uh, price. Well, but that's... Well, everyone, but, but, but still. But, every, but everyone's okay. using that for right now. So until we see, like, a Hobby Link Japan or an Ami Ami price, like, closer to Japanese regular retail, we, we don't know how much is placeholder and how well, much... You know, like my, that. My my point but, being is, if they were the same price, which would you have picked? If they had come out at the same time, yep, I probably would have waited for a review on Sunstreaker to see if there was a see what the transformation was like, and then I would have probably picked based on that. I would probably go with the Sunstreaker, just because if the price was the same, it does come with a chip chase, which would be nice to have for the collection as well. But that's the, but that's also something as well is that when Sun when Sun Surge came out, it looked like we weren't going to be getting a, a Lambert uh, Sun Streaker for a while because we've talked about the last thing issues before. But my big thing is the price. Even it, even assuming the placeholder uh, not, not the placeholder price, look at what Ironhide came out at about eighty nine dollars. Same thing for Ratchet. Look how much stuff. You got with Ironhide and Ratchet just last last year, and now and now you've got Sunstreaker with less stuff, about thirty to forty dollars more, give give or take. Um, granted, I'm sure if the one twenty proves to be relatively close, or Japanese retail is say ninety to a hundred, I'm sure there's licensing built into that, trying to you know because of the licensing and all that involved. Yeah, but. Am I going to replace my Sunstreaker with Sunstreaker? If I can Dynamics one and pay less than what pay, pay less than the one twenty, yeah, that's no problem. But I have a perfectly good Sunstreaker, like I have a perfectly good Jazz, I have a perfectly good <laughs> Cyclonus. I, I'm, I, I'm I'm telling you, you're going to have a hard time beating those figures, right? And you know, I want to buy the official ones. But if I look at it from a standpoint of if this is a character I like, but it's not a must have the best version like Trailbreaker or Trax or, or Inferno, yeah, you know, if it's if, you know, if it's not, if I just want a, the best representation of the character, and when I can get a third party Jazz for a hundred bucks shipped, and I'm looking at a Sunstreaker for a hundred and twenty, and if we get a Jazz, who's to say this Jazz will not have the same licensing issues that Sunstreaker had. And, and again, if that's built into the 120, why would I want to spend that I, much I, money? I, I, I don't think it's important to get hung up on the 120. I really, really, no, really just, think that's well, uh, that's a I'm placeholder just, price. I'm just saying, if I'm, just, I'm just using that because price. To me, the price <laughs> is important because well, how much figure think, are you getting? I think Brett's got a question on this. <laughs> okay. All right. Apparently, I, apparently, I've done something he's, wrong. He's getting his you, zen together. You didn't, but I'm, I'm going back to the masterpiece thrust mm. story. All right, okay, all right. 
So yes, price is important, official is important. But when you're giving such crap as a masterpiece thrust that is a piece of garbage, it's garbage, and it's it, it is official. I have to sit back and say, is this going to be better? Is this going to be better? And since I already bought it, yes, I'm biased towards that's the way I want it to go. Whether you want to look at it from a non-biased, you really want to be non-biased, don't buy anything. Don't buy anything. Any, anything. Anything. anything until, yeah, don't, <laughs> don't buy, buy anything until everything comes out. Okay. And you can make a, a completely unbiased decision based upon what you've heard on everything. Otherwise, yeah. I jumped on it. I went, thrust. Official. It's got to be good. Mine was a piece of garbage. Garbage. I, I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Well, Brett, let me ask you a question just for our viewers. Sure. How much ballpark was thrust when you got him? I believe it was 179 if I remember correctly. Okay. The one I'm holding here is the BB-7 Yes Model. It is a KO. But Yes Model is a lot like Yijang, and I'm sure a lot of our viewers have seen the Yijang product. You know, the, 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 the upscale evasion mode Optimus, their larger version of MP-10 that are very, very high quality. This cost me, after a bit of dynamics, $80 with free shipping. Is it the same size? I, I don't know, but I have seen comparisons. Roughly one-to-one. One. I, I have seen comparisons on video where they compare, and they are just about dead even okay, between, so, across so, the board. So you're looking at something that's it's about the same. Now grab the top and give it a little shake. Now mine, my official... And I'm not going to grab it because it's buried in the back for a reason. Would be doing a little hula dance. Exactly. It would be doing like this. Now, that's official. So you can see why I'm a little ticked off when everyone thinks, oh, official, better. Oh, third party, not. So, yeah. yes. And, yeah. and that's why I have third party here, third party there. Right. And, and maybe I jumped the gun. But until you show me something that is better... I'm not going to trade. Well, up. I, th I think you I think you're kind of hitting around the the crux of what of what we're trying to get at here is that why do people sell? Okay, they've announced. Let me finish here. They, they, they've Start announced. Time. They've announced MP39 as masterpiece Sunstreaker. This happened with Inferno. This happened with Megatron. Uh, I'm sure it's going to happen again down the road, especially if uh, Trailbreaker and Hoist do come to be. Um, but, you know, why do people sit there and say, oh, my God, there's an official version out. Uh, whether or not it's better or not, I want the official one. I get that. I get that you want to support the official brand. I want to support the official brand. However, you know, it, is it necessary to sell the third party and replace it with the official uh, my thinking is is uh, it, it's it's purely on a character individual basis. I'm not just going to sit there and say, I, and I didn't do it with Inferno. I've been very tempted to pick up an official masterpiece Inferno because it's an amazing piece of engineering. I've got the grapple version of the mold. I was blown away with it. Uh, but I'm sitting here looking at it, and I'm like, I'm getting art fire. So I'm going to have an Inferno-ish version of the mold. Uh, you know, I, I think the only difference between it is colors, maybe a different head, and uh, he's coming with the Target Master. Um, but you've got the fact that, the, uh, you know, you, I, I've, I've already got a third-party Inferno. I am very, very happy with Make Toys hellfire i love it i love the uh, love the aesthetics of it i f i don't really feel inclined to replace that figure just like uh um uh, brett said with uh downbeat uh I, I love downbeat he is he is jazz to me uh an amazing piece of engineering i'm not real fond of the of the of the windows on the back of the legs mine tend to pop off rather easily no, I mean uh, during transformation. <laughs> I'm talking about during transformation. I, I know. I, I'm um, just saying this thing is 
I, yeah. I'm sorry, but it's mine. Mine's solid. It's Mine is phenomenal. solid. Mine well, is solid. But whenever I'm transforming it, uh, the windows tend to pop off. But now, the, now there is one thing, real quick. I, I was curious about you guys. Do you see a kind of a small flaw in the clips on the chest piece that, from here to that? That is something yeah. that it does irk me, but it's nothing that but you once can't... you pitch it down, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now, Duran, you. One I'm just being honest to all of our listeners as to to the what yeah. I think of it. It, it does They're have a little perfect. none of them. And, and you could take the wings out and make it more toy, -ish. however you toy want it. Yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. more uh, cartoon like. I, I'm sorry, but I mean, I'm God dang it! This yeah. is so damn close. Yes. They're really gonna. And I, don't get me wrong. Do I think they can do better? Of course they can. But they really got to wow me to get me but, to sell this. But here's also something to consider as well, in my viewpoint, is what they're showing us that much better for what they're going to be asking. Because, well, you know, I, I don't... I, I'm sorry, but blackout silhouettes don't do not do it for me. Yes, do I think they're making a, a, a an attempt? Yes. But they made an attempt in others that failed. Yeah. But, you know, it's just the fact that I know I know some people that they'll buy a third party figure to fill a hole in a masterpiece collection, but it's a placeholder. They will as soon as the official one is announced, they'll sell it. And I yes just and no. but yes. I, I'm yeah, right I there. Just, I just don't see it doesn't matter if you've got a mixture of third party Is that the right thing to do, Don? Is that the right I, thing to do? Who are you to say? Yeah, it's 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 up to every. I don't personally. Here's me. I have my masterpieces. I have third. I have third party. I have Takara. I have uh, uh, the 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 uh, BB7 model. I'll be putting thrust, and I have Ramjet and Dirge. I like this so much. I bought the other two ones for about eighty bucks a piece with free shipping, so I can complete my Seekers except for Sunstorm. Debating on Sunstorm because I have a Hasbro Sunstorm, but. It's, uh, I don't see a reason why you can't... If you like Masterpiece, it doesn't have to be all official. If, if the if the representation you have, like Hellfire and Wrestle, if that representation is who you think the character best is best suited for that character, it doesn't matter if it's mixed. But Absolutely. If you, but if you want an all Takara or Hasbro Masterpiece line, that's fine. It's... But here's the thing, though. None of us are clairvoyant. We don't. We, we can say yes. We will eventually. And has and Dakar has recently. I mean, uh, Dakar has recently said through translation, roughly, they want to get all the 84, 85, 86 done. Now, right. how long will that take? And do you want to wait? That's what you've got to ask yourself. And again, I, I'm not trying to default to price. But if what we're seeing jumping from Ratchet, Ironhide, that $90 with that much stuff to Sunstreaker with a lot less stuff, well, and you've got, you know, how is this how is this trend going to continue? Are you paying more for something that doesn't give you a much better representation other than the Kara make toys? That's Takara logo. Yourself. Hmm. Well, how a lot of people, uh, a lot of people see it as brand loyalty, and I think that's the crux of wh uh, what it is. A lot of people they want the official one; uh, they'll get the third party, and like you said, it's going to be a placeholder. And they want the official one uh, because they want to. They, they're brand loyal. They want us, you know. Uh, Hasbro, Takara is the best. Uh, nothing, everything else sucks. Some people don't even buy third party for that reason, but. The, th the problem is is that whenever you get people uh, and I'm, I'm sitting here saying right now that it doesn't make financial sense to buy multiple versions of the same character uh, especially whenever you do a lot of different characters you know but if you in my opinion if you use a on uh, or per figure a, a per figure basis, um, you know, I'm not going to replace my Hellfire because I'm happy with uh, uh, with with him as my Inferno. However, I do plan on getting Sun or, or uh, the Sunstreaker, 
but I'm not going to replace my Sun Surge. Sun Streaker will take his place in the actual display, but I will display my Sun Surge maybe next to him or somewhere else in my display and possibly even in a different mode. Because, like I said, I really like that character. Sunstreaker is one of my favorite characters. Uh, and and I like him. Uh, I know in St. Galvatron, he buys every version of Galvatron that comes out. You know, And there's nothing wrong with that. Because that's his favorite character. He's got Sovereign. He's got uh, uh, the, uh, the Tyrant. Um, and if they come out with an official Galvatron... I'm sure he'll buy that one too. And he'll have all three. They have a place in his display. That's an entirely different thing. That's that's your favorite character. It makes sense. I will buy any version of Weird Wolf that comes out. That's my favorite, absolute favorite character. So that that's not an argument. The argument is, is that should you be the one that whenever an official version comes out, Fire sale the one that you have, replace it with the official. Does it make sense? Ultimately, I don't think it makes sense. I I, I just I don't either. Just because you're you're the only way I can see that is mm-hmm. that if what comes out is such a significant improvements in look that uh, design, I agree with that. I agree with that. Now let's say know, let's say uh, let's say. Inferno came out and it hands down beat my uh, Make Toys Hellfire uh, in every single aspect, you know, in look, in in design, everything. Yeah, I under uh, I give it that it, it's got some uh, some legs up on on Hellfire, um, but do, is it far superior? In my opinion, it's not. Well, not enough to justify exactly. what having another one exactly. when you and I are on the same page with those. Now, if if I can't, if I'm like you, grapple. If, uh, through Dononomics or Duronomics, <laughs> <laughs> if I can if I can get a hold of a, a uh, an official Inferno for a really cheap price, I might do it. <laughs> I might do it. But right now, I just don't feel the urge to replace Hellfire. Not when there's stuff coming out that we don't have any representation of that'll be coming out later on. Like, you know, we're, we're going to have a, a lot of time to turn stuff up coming. Some things may we're, never we're, have an official masterpiece and uh, masterpiece version of it. You know, uh, you know, we may never get a masterpiece Scourge or a masterpiece Cyclonus uh, or oh, what's another one? Uh, shoot. Reflector, no. reflector. I mean, yeah. what's the likelihood we'll ever get an official masterpiece reflector? Very low, in my opinion. He's not one of those top tier characters that everybody's got to have. Reflector. Yeah, it's Absolutely. just. I mean, it all boils down to what is more. I, mean, I guess for me, I, I'm not trying to. I'm, I'm a cheap ass bastard. I've mentioned this before, and that's just the way oh, I. Oh, we am. already knew that, Don. Yeah, you know, yeah, I call the papers, but I. I will I will buy a new a, you know like, so for example okay, here's an example I have the eye gear tote slash iron hide and their fix it slash ratchet that came with the iron hide and ratchet heads because again we didn't know when or if we would be getting an actual iron hide and ratchet I wasn't planning on buying iron hide and ratchet because I liked the two I had from eye gear. But then I saw actual photos and actual transformations and not the crappy photos that Takara put out initially. Because we all saw how crappy them photos wound up being compared to the final product. There wasn't that much tweaking on the final product. They were just crappy-ass photos. And so I went ahead and got Ironhide and Ratchet. But I still have the two eye gears because they are now aesthetically different enough to be there to be their own, you know, tote and fix it on my shelf. They're not ratchet and iron heart anymore. Mentally, I've made them tote and fix it. Am I going to sell them? Probably not because, one, I know I can get a lot for them, and, two, I still like them. Yeah. Brett, you've I, been chomping at the bit to say something. <laughs> uh, all right, so... Because we need we need to wrap this up and uh, and move on to our other main topic. Right, so, so, so real quick, go ahead and say. Uh, 
and, and the so problem is, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to what I said before. You're, you're talking about official versus unofficial, and do you buy the official and get rid of the unofficial? Um, I'm still gonna go right back to what I said before. It depends on which one do you like better. Do you like this better? You know, do you like this better? Whatever, and the price point. And the little nuance is is yes. I absolutely love this. Now, if they make one uh, official that's better, and I can sell this one and buy that one cheaper and offset the cost, would I sell this one cheaper to get the one I want? Yes. That's the little nuance that you kind of didn't talk about is not only is it about Don Anonymous and buying stuff, it's also about Meganomics and selling stuff. So if you sell it, get what you want out of it, and buy what you want, why not? But, but here's the thing, though, to me. If you sold Downbeat and you sold him for 50 bucks the day the Jazz was announced, you have uh, lost half the value. Sure. Aren't you, aren't, and if Jazz was ninety nine ninety nine, But sure. you saved you that value by, uh, by putting that 50 bucks toward the official one. True, but you're actually spending 150 for that jazz because you've lost 50. Un- unless the unless well, the time na- that was now in the you're getting now you're getting into the way uh, into the GameStop argument. You know, so what you do <laughs> is you wait until that guy is desperate for money and sells it for half price, and then you buy it for half price, and you bought it for the amount that you sold the other one for. Okay. Bam. Or you, or you could just know somebody that uh, that, that 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 pervades uh, and stuff. And, you know. So what it comes down to is you have Dononomics, you have Duronomics, you have Meganomics, which actually sounds better. Sorry, Meganomics, it really sounds good. Well, God, I love that. It, it's your I just inf- made that up. That it's your inflection so that you put on it. It makes it sound like crap. But anyway, but it sounds so good. Meganomics. What it comes down to is that if you sell stuff for the right time and the right price and you buy stuff for the right time and the right price, you don't lose money. There you go. Well, now, now, if, if we could all do that, that'd be great for the stocks. Well, let me ex- expand on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the statement I made, the, the GameStop argument. You know, should you buy a video game uh, and when, uh, when you're done playing with it and everything, take it to GameStop and get what you can out of it. GameStop may give you 45 cents for it they may give you, give you 25 dollars for it a game that you originally paid 60 or 70 bucks for a lot of people says that's stupid why would it you is. do that however if you look <laughs> at it from the standpoint and this is the way i look at it if i play the game and i either hate it if if you hate it you can take it back and get get your money directly back for it. you can return it but if that, you play that, the game that uh, that, let's nix that from the beginning but yeah. go ahead uh, but if you play the game and you get your enjoyment out of it, the money that you have paid for that game, you uh, you basically uh, and and basically what you sell the game for and what you paid for the game, that gap is what you paid to enjoy that game for however long you owned it. In my opinion, that's the way I look at it. If you buy a if you buy a third party toy and you own it until the t- uh, the official one comes out, and you sell it, let's say let's say you pay a hundred bucks for for Downbeat, the they announce an official Jazz, you sell Downbeat for fifty bucks, you put that fifty bucks toward the official Downbeat, and you pay an additional fifty. You know, you got you got. I mean, I'm sorry. The official jazz, uh, jazz. You've got jazz for basically fifty bucks, but you, like Don said, you've paid a hundred and fifty. It doesn't make sense if you stop and think about it. Yeah. Okay. I but, will. What, I will let me let me, fin- let me finish though. Let me Go finish ahead. real quick. Go but ahead. if you if you consider that for fifty bucks, for fifty bucks, you enjoyed having a. Uh, a satisfying uh, jazz in your collection mm-hmm. uh, that represented jazz to uh, to its perfection as, as much as it can possibly represent. You are happy. You basically paid fifty bucks for that toy to uh, to enjoy that toy for a, per- a period of time. In my opinion, that is not a waste. Well, you could 
chalk that up to like going to the movies and seeing a movie, uh, going to a play, seeing a play, uh, going to the amusement park and riding a ride. It, it is something that you will never get back, but you paid for it and you're going to have those memories. Right. I do right. understand that. Right. But I, I'll give you a for instance. If you have, let's say, a G1 Trypticon, because I happen to have him right here. And you decide, I don't want him anymore. I want the the new one that's coming out. I'm going to sell this. You said GameStop, which to me is the low of the low. You could sell it and get pennies. Or you could go to another outlet, like, I don't know, maybe make a toy fan. And they'll give you more. But the, regardless, well, my point being in the is... the video is game analogy, there's not a whole lot of options out there. There, there <laughs> are. There are. And I could tell you some. There are. If you go, there's there's plenty of Facebook groups out there for vintage video games, just like there are for Transformers, uh, uh, GoBots, you name it. It's using your head. If you don't need the money in hand right now and you're willing to, to do your research, you're going to get more money. And I've said that all along. If you go back to the very first podcast I was ever on with, with TFYLP, knowledge equals power. It really does. The more research you do, the more you look, the better you're going to be. If, if at the end of the day, the guy that offered you 10 cents for it and everyone offers you 10 cents, that's fine. But chances are, at the end of the day, you're going to find out that you probably could have got more. You always do the research. Find yeah. out who's going to give you the better deal. And there's one thing I'm going to say that I'm going to wrap up my viewpoint on this. No, no matter what you do with your collection, it's your collection – Right. Play with the way you want to. Display the way you want it to. Whatever you feel like you you like to do, do it because it's y'all stuff. Go for y'all it. Y'all stuff. But, but don't find fault if someone else doesn't do the same thing because we're all collectors. We all sure. collect different. There's a lot more important things to worry about than, oh, that guy's got mixed masterpiece. What's wrong with him? Versus, oh, he's got all official. It doesn't matter. Enjoy right. your collection. Let animals enjoy your collection, and just be good and, and rock on. I don't. I don't know about you guys, but one of the things I love is I became a uh, a member of a Facebook Facebook group. It was about uh, just uh, action figure action figure displays, and it talked about all the different ways of displaying your your collection. And I looked at this uh, collections, and I was like, "Wow, I don't have that. Yeah, I have got that. No, I've got mine displayed differently." didn't matter it was enjoyable it was neat and everyone's collection meant something to them and how they displayed it and that's that that was great i loved it it's a it's a great group there's other groups out there like that but What's, Don's, what floats uh, one person's boat does great. not necessarily float another's Bingo. absolutely absolutely and you know that's if you look around facebook the message boards uh you know wherever you frequent reddit i don't i don't care people's always going to sit there and and say oh look at all the all the sun surges that's uh, that's hitting the hitting ebay right now that might be but somebody sees that masterpiece sun streaker and they're like i've got to have it that version looks way better than the one that i already have i'm going to spend my money on it that's their prerogative conversely some uh, you may not like that, and they'll wait to the opportune time to buy the one that someone's dumping cheap, and they just made a hell of a sale yeah. or a buy. And and I, I kind of see how some people can see uh, see that it's funny. I mean, you know, it's like, oh, well, you're going to uh, sell that for pennies. There's somebody, there's some people out there that, regardless of whether or not there's an official version on its way, are still willing to pay top dollar. For a good solid figure like Sun Surge, is you know I, I mean I gave a hundred bucks for mine or thereabouts you know so you know if you put it up there for eighty I don't think that's unreasonable you know I mean you've you've enjoyed right. it you know but I've I've seen auctions up there for forty and fifty bucks get this thing out of my possession that mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever I find that laughable. Yeah, but to someone else that doesn't want it anymore. Yeah, if you really, it. really don't want it, yeah, I get well, that. Well, they paid 30 bucks over for, for so many months for 30 bucks. They've enjoyed it. They played with it. It's time to move on. And that's fine for them, too. 
there there's different you know different strokes for different folks yeah. and, and it's all good you know and, and like you said you can't really knock someone that goes all one way or all another or flip flops or wants to spend all their money on one only to get rid of it when the next better thing comes out okay and then some people actually listen to what we say as far as to wait see everything that comes out make a, a more educated decision and, and purchase upon that. But well, it, I, I in, think, the, in the end, it doesn't, it's, it's someone's collection is their collection. I think, I think we've kind of beat this over the head. Let's mm-hmm. move on to our main topic tonight. Uh, and <laughs> I, I really, you know, Don's what? laughing for a very good reason. Um, I, you know, we went a little bit longer on the, on the sun surge sun streaker thing. Uh, yeah, but it was good. It, it's, I, it's I good. really do believe that people need to know that There's a pro- it, just because you want to do that doesn't make you wrong. Yeah. It doesn't. Um, but this is another argument here that we're, we're moving on to. And to preface it, I'm going to say it's it's been an argument that we've had for at least, what, the last 11, 12, 15 years. <laughs> um but it's 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 going to continue on for as long as time uh, goes. Um, but if you want to follow along and you're near a computer, you can point your browser to hascon.hasbro.com. Uh, we are going to be talking about the official Hasbro convention coming up. Uh, when is it? In July? No, uh, September. 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 Um, they recently over the last week, week and a half or so, uh, have revealed their pricing. <laughs> All right. Uh, you, wait a minute. Are you ready? Let, I'm, I'm not done with the intro here. They've revealed... I was going to do a screen share. Well, I've got screen shares all set up. I've, I've, got, oh. all that, I've, I've got all that ready to go. Uh, okay, go ahead. Because people won't believe this, but go ahead. Well, I was going to... I've got a structure to this thing, so just let me be, man. Let me be. Let me be. Go for it. Don't make me come up there and slap you. You're only an hour and a half away. Now, Shit. anyway. <laughs> Start driving now. <laughs> I know you got guns. I got guns. And dogs. Yeah. But, <laughs> but anyway. I don't have a Massey, but I got a couple of dogs. <laughs> don't don't talk about your sons like that now. <laughs> Easy now. They know how to shoot, too. <laughs> I'm in Kentucky. We all know how to shoot. Yeah. Anyway, Hascon, uh, they, they've announced their official pricing. Uh, I know on the last podcast, uh, before, uh, the Peter Spellos, uh, um, interview, which I think, you know, I'm going to take a little side moment here to thank Jim Black for having the, uh, discussion with, uh, Mr. Spellos. I want to thank Mr. Spellos for, uh, uh, for being able to take some time and, uh, and talk to Jim on behalf of TFYLP. Uh, great interview, uh, sit-down interview that's about an hour long. Uh, you can check it out on episode 247, no, 248 of TFYLP. Um, and Peter Spellos, if you aren't aware, is the voice of Robots in Disguise Skybite from back in the day, back 17 years or so. Anyway, Hascon. Uh, the argument that have been going on for years uh, are the fact that people complain about prices. Now that in and of itself is not new. That's not newsworthy. Like Don said earlier, don't, you know, call the newspaper. Uh, But, you know, a couple episodes ago, Don said that he was going to base his opinion or base his, his decision on whether or not he wants to go once they reveal a little more information, well, they revealed some information here recently, and yes, I'm I'm yeah. going I'm going to start out. Uh, we're going to talk uh, about it from the standpoint that Brett would look at the artist and dealer point of view, uh, and then we'll go into the actual attendees. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to say right off the top of my of my head, I really really want. Hascon to succeed. I really want it to be something special uh, because we don't have an official Transformers convention anymore. I have my reservations about this because you're mixing bronies. I know Daniel said this 
uh, in episode 247. You're mixing bronies, you're mixing Joe fans, Transformer fans, Magic fans, all of these different things. You know, and you got just general people coming there with their families. And, you know, should somebody fly all the way, say, from the UK to Hascon to see a couple glass cases with what's coming out next year, a single panel, and maybe a couple moderately, if not nothing really special, exclusives. You know, you know, maybe the exclusive will be knock your soft so- socks off. I don't know. But I-, I have my reservations about the whole idea behind Hascon. I get what they're trying to do. I don't wish them any ill. But I, seeing what they've released here, I really question <laughs> whether or not... They've got anybody sane behind the uh, the, the helm of this. Let's. Uh, I'm going to screen share here uh, the uh, the dealer. Uh, uh, so if you're watching the video, current or, or the advertised prices prices for the dealer and auto, uh, artist table. Let's start with the low end artist table comes uh, from, let me pull it up on the actual main website because the one that I'm sharing is too small on my screen. Hold on. Exhibitors. All right. Let's scroll down here. Okay. The artist table is $350. An eight foot, that includes an eight-foot draped table, two chairs, an ID sign, Listing on hascon.hasbro.com and two exhibitor badges. Okay. Well, you're sitting here saying, well, what what's so bad about that? Well, 350 bucks. Uh, some artists, you know, one piece of their art is going to be 350 bucks. That might be in and of itself. But the small tables, let's say uh, uh, Cal, uh, Cali Karashaka. Uh, if, if if I'm saying that right, she always made the little little plush transformers. Uh, the uh, um, I, I can't remember what she called them right off the top of my head. I always thought they were awesome. She handmade the pu- those things. The formers. Poke, uh, uh, no, not pug. poke. Uh, pug formers. Yeah, puggle formers. Pug. Puggle formers. I always thought that, they were. Isn't awesome. that right? Puggle. Uh, puggle. I believe so. I always thought they were awesome. Think uh, they're they're cutesy. Uh, they're artsy. They're transformers. They're not official, but you know they're they don't officially look like anything. They just resemble more of anything. Uh, would she make enough to cover her cost of the table, her travel to and from the con, her eats, uh, her room, all of that stuff? With a price at three hundred fifty bucks, I've got to question that. Uh, and that's just for an artist's table. Uh, it, uh, you know, an eight-foot draped table, two chairs, that's all fine and dandy. Um, but I got to question whether or not that's an actual... Some artists, they can go, they may only sell a couple pieces. You know, they might have some great stuff, but, you know, their stuff might be so expensive that only a couple people may actually buy something other. And I'm, I'm, I'm being very, very general and very drastic here i'm i'm sure there's people that go and sells more than a couple pieces but i'm just being using this for illustration 350 bucks is a bit steep for an artist table maybe uh do you know how much an artist table was at botcon brett no um that's why i really that's why i really wish this were but not the artist. Well, we're, we're going to get into the boost here in a second. I, I, that's why I, I, I really you would. I was sitting here thinking in my head, and I wanted to say, I, I I can't remember if it was around 150. Yeah. I I do know it was less than 200. But I mean, I I, that's know. that's why I was wishing Daniel was here because he was actually on the Botcon staff last year, so um, he might be able to tell us that. But anyway, right. let's move on to the actual dealer booths. And Brett, nice. you can give us some insight on this. Well, um, the basic here, booth. Here, let me let me let me just go, go over ahead. the basic booth. Is yeah. one thousand dollars includes a ten by ten booth, which that's a decent size. Six foot a a six foot draped table. Only two chairs. 
an ID sign listing on Hascon, Hasbro.com. They, they, they list that like it's something huge. Uh, anyway, uh, and four exhibitor badges, which means two of their helpers are going to have to stand. <laughs> you know, um, Thanks. But $1,000 for the basic booth. Brett, how much was the basic booth at BotCon? Okay. Um, and, and I might be off by like 25 bucks because there's discounted rates also. But basically a booth, if I remember correctly, was 425 and it was one six foot and two, it was either eights or sixes. But that, mean, that meant across you had 10. And if it went eights, I mean, that would mean a 10 by eight. Okay. Which is very comparable to the 10 by 10. But instead of having one six foot table, you had a six and two eights for 425. Multiple tables. And you got two badges. Um, an extra badge, if I remember correctly, I think it went up to 100, but at one point it was 75. I think it was 100. So let's just say two more helper badges at 100 each. That's still 625 as opposed to 1,000. Now, if you got two booths, they knocked off 25 bucks each. So you could get two booths, which would be 10 by 20. And that would be uh, $800 because they knocked off $25 on e off each end. And you would get four uh, dealer helpers. And then, of course, it would be $100 for each more. So I'm looking at even, even at their deluxe booth, which they have, they still have 20 by 10, but they only have one table, six badges. Um, at the original rate would have been 800 plus another two, a thousand dollars. You would have had that. That's less than half. And, and even at the premium booth of 20 by 10, you could see exponentially. The point being is, is even if you looked at this, if you bought a basic booth for a thousand at Hascon, you got four badges and a 10 by 10 with one table. If you did that twice for two thousand, you would get two six foot tables and eight badges for two thousand dollars. Two thousand so five hundred. To to, exactly. Their their packages do not make sense. It, it doesn't make sense. You're I'll not be honest with you. You're losing. Uh, this is on here. Honestly, looks like somebody pulled these prices out of somebody's ass. Well, I think uh, they it, did it specifically to keep the smaller dealers out. Because we've we've been told. I know Rick said it, uh, and uh, and and you've said it. Yes, uh, they don't want the flea market atmosphere. Right. That now look like at Botcon. As much as we like to and, and capture prey, and, and we 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 do try and be professional. We're still more of the flea market e type atmosphere at conventions than we are you know going to you know walmart or whatever you know the big conglomerate mm -hmm. and that's what they want to stay away from but that's where you that's where you get your best deals that's where your your collectors are and that's that's and something that's that you all discuss, uh, discussed from. at length in episode exactly. 247 you know exactly. it's uh if you want to listen more on that particular topic uh go back and listen to the botcon void uh, because that's ex essentially what led us into this right here. Uh, right. You know, Hascon, Hasbro, they don't want that atmosphere. They don't want us to be able to go and buy vintage Transformers. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not saying with this that, that you can't at Hascon. I'm sure that there's going to be somebody that will pay these prices, one of these prices, and they will have vintage Transformers there. Guarantee they're not going to have GoBots. Well, maybe they might because Has Hasbro owns GoBots now. Uh, but, you know, they're not going to have the other weird stuff in there. You know, like, you know, maybe a He-Man or anything like that because competitors stuff. You know. Right. Uh, but, you know, having, having these prices at this, you know, the premium booth is $5,000. $5,000 for a 40 by 10 booth, two six foot tables, four chairs, which means that there's going to be six people sitting 
because you get 10 exhibitor badges if you if you get uh, the $5,000 premium booth. 10, 10 helpers, but only four of them can sit. Now, I, I'm assuming that they're not going to let you bring your own chairs. Well, but, that's the other thing, because you're only talking about two six-foot tables there. And we brought in, uh, at least our booth brought in displays and extra tables, this, that, and the other. But even even for the big booth uh, of two, which cost less than a thousand, mind you, uh, we had plenty of tables. We had one, two, three, four, five, six tables, six, six, as opposed to two. I mean, that's a big difference. It is now. Now you bring in your displays, this, that, and the other. That's fine, but still, once again, it, it's five times as much the cost. And I'm sorry, I, I try and be as fair as possible. All the other dealers try to be as fair as possible, but someone's got to eat that cost. And it's and you have to pass it on to the to the it, the to consumer. The you have to. It's like a lot of people. Whenever you buy stuff at the store, oh, this is so expensive. You got to uh, f- factor in the cost. It, you know, a lot of people say, "Well, it doesn't cost this much to make this this toy." Well, you got to factor in the cost. Okay, the material, uh, the acquisition of the material to make that toy, the packaging, uh, the design, uh, the the design distribution research to to design it to the distribution and whoever's making that Absolutely. noise needs to stop. <laughs> It's coming through really loud. Um, yeah. That, Damn it! Uh, I told y'all to tell me. You're beating on the table a lot too. Anyway, um, that's what a shock mount's for, dude. We're, I told you it's on order. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought here. Uh, okay. But you know, uh, the, to to sell a toy, you know, you got to factor in the distribution and all of that. And it's all passed on to the consumer. It might only cost them in materials forty five cents to make a deluxe toy, but you uh, you know research and development, the uh, the 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 tooling, the packaging, the delivery of said uh, said toy, it all adds up. You know, there's a lot of mouths you got to feed to help make that toy come in into your hot little hands. So that's all passed on, and that's. Whenever you make a, a, a premium booth cost or a basic booth cost of a thousand to five thousand dollars, you're going to have, and and I don't mean this by any means a disrespect, Brett, but a small time dealer such as yourself, you're small compared to Hasbro. Uh, you know, a small time dealer come in there. You know, I'll I'll, I'll I'll flat out ask you, Brett, if you bought the premium booth, which you usually had a rather large booth at BotCons. You would probably yep. need a premium booth, right? Or at least a deluxe? At least the deluxe, yes. At yes. those prices, could you make a decent profit? And accept That is profit? why we are not going to Hascon this year. <laughs> it's just not viable. I, I don't want to sell a deluxe toy that I usually sell for $10 at 15 I, I don't want to do that. So I would rather go and hit some of the more local shows and sell cheaper and maintain the same status that I've had, and I'm fine with that. So, no, we're not going to Hascon have you had specifically a chance, because of this. Have you had a chance to review a contract for Hascon? Um, I did. I, I did a an early contract. Um, I don't know if it's the same one because the, the first contract that I got was emailed to me which was different than the one that is on the website. But uh, a lot of the stuff I didn't have a problem with, you know, third party stuff. I don't sell a lot of third party stuff, uh, copyright infringement stuff on your website, this and the other, but I didn't have a problem with any of that. Um, uh, some of the stuff was a little vague, but the big thing was, is I, I was like, yeah, we we may go, we may not. And as soon as these prices came up, done. Absolutely. Not, done. Yeah. Now, Don, I know, uh, Don, I know you're not a dealer. Your brief thoughts on the dealer pricing. Then we're going to get into the attendee pricing, and I want you to talk more on that. Thoughts on the dealer pricing? They're stupid. <laughs> you're nope, so stupid. Not, not pulling any punches here, Don. They are. They are. Either they do not know what to price. I mean. 
I grew up and when my mother and father retired, they did antiques and collectibles. I did that until I was old enough to start regular work as well. That's where I love my wheeling and dealing came from. Dad gave me one piece of advice. You can always start high and cut. You can start low and then start going up. Sure. So that that's a basic rule of thumb. So they're starting high because this is the first year. They don't know what to expect. They're trying to draw a certain kind of clientele, but they're also pricing themselves out of reach of most people who would be carrying their product because their margins are so low, the volume they would have to sell to make it worth this trip to Rhode Island is not there. I can tell you right now, having been a dealer helper for a major Transformer dealer, I can tell you right now, the profit margin on toys is not as much as you think. From what for what the what the dealer has to pay to get that product, and what they sell it for is not a whole lot more than what they pay for it. I know that for it's a not, fact. It's volume, not margin. It's, it's, basically it's volume, down. not margin. Uh, really, in all honesty, Brett's probably right in the market for what uh, wh- where the main. Uh, um, money making stuff is and that's uh, pre-owned because generally a and this is whenever BBTS was buying pre-owned toys uh, the uh, generally the offer that you would get would be okay you take what what the market value of the toys and cut that in half that's what their offer would generally be I've sold to BBTS a couple times <laughs> And, and I know Brett's and, Brett's philosophy might be a little bit different, but generally, you know, you can't expect to get more than half of what a toy is worth if you sell it to a a, a reseller because they the, have they have to make them that. they have to make profit off of it, and I, it's not I, unusual for them to uh, let's say if a toy's worth a hundred dollars, they all offer you fifty, but whenever they uh, they resell it, they'll sell it for uh, anywhere between. A hundred dollars, uh, and that fifty dollars. You know, it's like, okay, let's say it's a hundred dollar toy. You go in and say, okay, I'll give you eighty five for that. You're asking them to knock off twenty five dollars or fifteen dollars. You know, for, uh, you know, they can do that and still make money, but it's all what the dealer wants to make the profit on. You know, it's like, I know what I have in that toy. I know what I want out of that toy, am I willing to take that uh, that amount for it? It's generally how it works. We've talked about that on previous episodes of TFYLP. Check those out if you want. Um, but the real money maker is on pre-owned stuff. If you want to say, if uh, the people that, and that's why BBTS, I believe, stopped selling or stopped buying collections is because it was not cost effective for them to get in collections and then have to sort through it. And some things, you know, they're, they're, they're buying a lot of stuff sight unseen. Uh, so, you know, it might be in lesser condition than they expected. They're not going to make as much on it. So they just don't do it anymore. They go with something that, okay, we know we're selling new product. We can sell it. Uh, we can pay this much for it and, and sell it for this much, and that's what her profit's going to be, her profit margin. But, Brett. Yeah, y- yes and no. Um, the, the profit margin on new stuff is anywhere from 15 to 25, maybe 30% if you're lucky. If that. You're, 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 you're never going to get that high. Um, on uh, vintage stuff, it, it, it is higher. It's much higher. But... Um, I could tell you that when I get a collection in, I just got a collection in, and I don't know how many hours I spent going through that, making sure it's all complete, making sure everything works, and getting ready for sale. And I know what you're going to say, well, that's not that big a deal. Well, then the other thing comes, if you have an online store. And you have, I can't find anything. All I have is, <laughs> go about zero. And you have a package toy. 
and you have a hundred of these, you post one picture and you put it on your website a hundred times. If I'm selling, I don't know, a GoBots toy. Cooper. Is that Cooper? Cooper. And it's loose. That's one. Then I sell Apollo. That's another picture. That's two. Then Scoop. That's three. You don't have stock or, photos to use and stuff. Yeah. You can't do that. You can't because each of them are different in in how they've been played one, with. One might have scuffs. One might be perfectly mint. So that makes a big difference. So because of that, I might have a stock of 40,000 parts, which I do, uh, uh, of G1 parts. And I can't sit there and put them all on my website because it would take me forever to post 4,000 parts. So instead, I go to shows and sell them that way. So there's difference. So it's extremely more important for me at a show to get a decent price booth than someone that just wants advertisement for their website where they could sell 10,000 of these in the package. And it, and it's and by, with this pricing, they've essentially priced out the small time dealer. The, yeah, the, the pro, small private dealers, they've pretty much priced you out. And if you're expecting, uh, you know, Orson with Capture Prey, he deals, he does carry some vintage items, especially at shows. He brings the vintage items are basically to add to his profit for the show, like well, Brett. Like Brett the has. same thing. He'd have to individually picture them, just like I said. Mm. So, I mean, it makes more sense to sell them at shows. But yeah. go ahead. Um, and actually, that's kind of what I've been doing is, uh, for him lately is taking pictures of stuff to put on the website. Uh, it's not ready yet. But um, the, 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 the point I'm getting at is even though he, is a, he doesn't necessarily deal primarily in vintage items or pre-owned items, he is more or less a new stock item dealer. Uh, then he's even out of the equation because he sells third party. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and BBTS isn't going to be there. They're big enough. I'm sure they could probably afford the $5,000 booth, but they sell third party. So don't expect to see BBTS, the biggest player in the game there. They don't just sell third party toys. They sell Mattel toys, Bandai toys, they sell it all. As a matter of fact, I'm going to ask you to name one of the dealers we've seen at the conventions. That doesn't that do the any of those. that's big enough to where they would afford that. And you, there's there is none. So essentially, for what Hasbro has done here, they're saying, okay, all those dealers that you're familiar with at previous Transformers conventions, they're not <laughs> going to be there. Essentially, they're not going to be there. I, you know, I, I really don't know. Many, if any, of the uh, the big time dealers that are going to be there. Um, now let's move on to the attendee stuff, and I'm going to screen share here. I've got the uh, the Hascon ticket badges and everything pulled up here. Uh, so if you're watching on the video, you can see what we're talking about. If you're listening to the audio, you can go to hascon.hasbro.com and see all of this information that we're we're discussing here right now. Now. At first look, it's not all that terrible. Uh, you know, uh, general admission grants you access to one full day at this premier event. Uh, experience a sneak peek behind... What, who is sending a message right now? Uh, right in the middle. Okay. Um, a, a sneak peek behind uh, the scenes of Hasbro with meet and greets, hands-on experiences... And all that jazz. Uh, and also an opportunity for ages 3 to 15 to audition for a Hasbro commercial. Uh, Don, uh, you want to look over the uh, prices there and tell us the prices for the uh, uh, for the single-day tickets? Yeah. Uh, or have you got it pulled up? I've got it pulled up. It's just it's, it's cycling to reload here. Oh, you um, were, I'm sorry. You were looking at porn, weren't you? <laughs> Toy oh. porn. <laughs> well, that's, that, this is not it. Trust me, if that's the case, then. Well, um, okay. All right. 
the uh, single day tickets are going to be uh, adult sixty dollars. This Youth. is for ages sixteen and up. Yeah, uh, uh, exactly. Um, child is free. Uh, youth is 30 and adult is 60. That's per day for a three day convention. Three day tickets, adult is 165, youth is 75, and children are, are I guess, under five, maybe. I don't, I don't see age on the page I'm on, but I'm guessing, you know, around that age, is still free. The VIP tickets. Well, let's, let's, let's not jump ahead here. Let's not jump okay, ahead. Okay. I'll, I'll just, okay. Uh, the VIP tickets is where it really gets crazy. I'll, uh, we know that. But, um, you know, 160 for, for us adults, if we were going, three-day ticket, $165. Uh, that's not too crazy, in my opinion. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's expensive, but it's not that expensive I, I i could probably if i were going to th- uh, for a three-day show uh and, I, and i'm pretty sure proto man is doing this thing daniel uh he's doing the three day and he's probably going uh for the 165 but if i'm not mistaken this doesn't come with anything else you don't get the toys or any of that you know the gra- the goodie bags and stuff uh so 165 bucks if you want to go all three days, or sixty dollars a day if you just want to go a day or two. Um, that's not in and of itself. Let's go on down here to the VIP tickets. Let's start with the very, very first tier of super fan, Don. Okay, the um, the, the the page I'm on lists the three, uh, the adult There's four. There's four here. Okay, there must be a different page. Then. Okay. Well, I'll I'll uh, I'll go ahead and go through them then because it, it doesn't look like we're on the same page then. Because yeah, hang on, because I, I clicked on tickets and that's what loaded. Here we are. Okay. All right. It finally yeah. decided to. Okay. It's the one with uh, the first one is with Optimus Prime, in the green there. Okay. Yeah. There it is. Okay. The uh, the super fan, the three day adult ticket, adults age sixteen and up. Not including Rhode Island state sales tax, six hundred dollars. Six hundred bucks. Six hundred mm-hmm. smackaroos. We're pro- we're talking at easily double the cost of say uh, the average botcon registration, or roughly maybe one and a half times. Yeah, well, you and, know, roughly one and a half times, and it's not even a Transformers only convention. Uh, I'm, I've got pulled up here the, uh, this includes, uh, interactive brand experiences, uh, panels. Oh, so, so I'm guessing with the other ones, you don't get the panel, the, the, the day admissions. I, I'm, I'm guessing you don't get the panels. I don't know. It doesn't state, uh, meet and greets, uh, entertainment, uh, you, you can cosplay. <laughs> Apparently you can't cosplay if you don't pay these prices. Uh, because why would they list it if it's not part of the other pri- uh, package? Yeah, there's a scavenger heart, scavenger hunt. You can play some of the some of the, like like real life versions of Hasbro board games. You can audition for the commercial, as you mentioned earlier, the commemorative program. Uh, you get VIP sitting at the panels, but you need to get there 40 minutes prior, so that way. You, and there's only the first 50 people will get in. And, and let's reiterate here, let's reiterate, this is not a Transformers-only convention, so there may only be one panel that is Transformers-specific. Right. Or this, or it may be a panel that everybody, all that representatives are all attending, covering, say, say it's one new product panel, but you've got, say, four properties showing off their stuff. So you're fighting against four other people, four other fandoms, to get access to this hall, um, you have reserved theater sitting. You get a goodie bag, and you can do a green screen experience, a first come first serve capacity as well. Uh, again, they had said earlier that that more will be revealed, but that's this is what we're working with now. Um, the next the next thing is the superstar, the three day youth <laughs> packet. This is ages, for the youth. 
Yeah. yeah. Ages 3 to 15. This is $200 plus Rhode Island State sales tax. Super and sure. the meeting, the, it's a, a lot of the same things. Uh, but you can definitely tell looking at the page, there's about a third of the things available that are not on this package. Yeah. And yep. let's, let's, let's already do some math here. Let's say you and uh, you're a parent, your wife, and you have one child that happens to be over the age of three. Let's say that you want to, uh, to go and you want to do all the bells and whistles here. Okay. $600 for you. Six hundred dollars for your wife. That's twelve hundred dollars, and then you got one child. That's two hundred dollars. And why am I seeing a picture of superstar? Superstar. Whatever. Anyway, uh, uh, that's fourteen hundred dollars for a, basically what sums up to be admission. Admission only and, and panels for no. gen, uh, for a general convention. For a general convention that you may uh, that that uh, we're looking okay, I get there's a lot of people that's into a lot of things, but if you want to go to a Transformers only specific convention, this is not your deal. Let's right. put let's put that out here, people. Yeah, and you and, really got to be a fan of everything, and if you want to go to this, I'm a big Hasbro <laughs> fan of uh, several properties, but there's not much at this convention. Of the stuff that I'm getting cross, cross interest in, you know, it, it's it's not you know. And then here's some here's the other two things. Um, we won't go into a lot of details because this doesn't really affect a lot of our viewers. Yeah. yeah. The soup the super fan for Magic the Gathering, which I know Magic is still huge. If you if you get the all if you get the all inclusive VIP package for the Magic the Gathering portion. Six hundred dollars. If you do these Dungeons and Dragons super fan, which is going to be all, all together now, six hundred dollars. And, and I guarantee you, there's nothing animated involved with that, so that's already you know yeah. bad enough. Well, but go ahead. Go ahead. I, I just want to interject, but but go ahead. Uh, no, go ahead. Go ahead, because it's 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 not much. It, it, really, really, there's only two packages for the people that are listening to this, the people that uh, are interested in the same things that we are. All right, you're looking at the super fan and super. I'm sorry, but every time I see that, I think of that show, Superstar. I'm sorry. So, so you got those. So you got you got two hundred dollars or six hundred. All right. So there's nothing. There's nothing for two hundred. There, there's literally you get nothing. All right, no, nothing. Right. So for six hundred bucks, all right, for one person with no child, can, can anyone look at this and not see what? And, and and only because we have nothing else to really compare it to other than BotCon. I'm not being biased on BotCon. I do well, know Botcon, there's San Diego right. Comic Con, but okay. that, that that well, and we'll get to that. That's a whole I was going to say something world. about that. Well, I was going to say something about that, but anyway, so six hundred dollars per versus what is the admission for BotCon? It's four hundred plus, but you get fourteen toys. Well, you get uh, how many in bunch, the box set? A bunch of toys. You get you get a bunch in the box set, and you get the av uh, availability to buy more. But it, let's just leave it at the the initial entry, and it's less than six hundred. So there, there, there's that. I wanted to get into the San Diego Comic Con feel and everything, but I didn't know because I had to go and. I'm uh, I'm in the process of pulling that battle. up real quick. But it's, I didn't know if you went to that. If you want to do the round table on that first, I'll wait my turn. But I do have something to say about the the San Diego and New York Comic Con. Feel. Okay, it's a four day pass for San Diego. I'm just trying to get a general comparison here. Okay, inventory is limited. View tickets. Okay. Uh, I'm just doing one ticket here for one person. Okay, a four-day ticket is $1,528 for a four-day ticket for one person. Well, but, and this one's 600 bucks for three days. Yeah. So you're talking But close. San Diego Comic-Con 
is a whole lot hu more huge than this thing. You at San Diego Thank Comic you. Con, you're going to have you. not just Tens toys. Of thousands. You're not just going to have thousands. not just toys, but comics, uh, movies, yes. television yes. shows, the actors that come there. Big time celebrities. Big time celebrities. Lots of news. You're getting what you pay for. At Hascon, it's Hasbro properties only with well, a few celebrity guests. May, may I uh, say my little rant on the Hascon versus San Diego Comic Con? Do that. Um, I'm stepping away real quick, but you, I'll let you speak. You got to pee too? Yes. I just did. Yes. Make sure you wash your hands. I have to pee. Okay, make sure you wash your hands. That's what took so long. I had to wash my hands. So. By the way, everyone, very, very important, wash your hands. Anyway, all right, that's our uh, – and, and knowing is half the battle. There you go. All right, so um, the big thing that I noticed was is I was listening to uh, Hascon as they would puke out some of the little tidbits here and there. And, and I actually love the word puke because that's what it was. And then all of a sudden they puked out the prices, which was a big puke. And um, I was like, holy crap, I haven't seen prices like this since I went and looked at New York Comic Con. And yes, the prices are very comparable to New York Comic Con. But what's the difference? New York Comic Con has tens of thousands of people. This place is being held in a center that can't hold tens of thousands of people. So they're not expecting tens of thousands of people. So as a dealer, why would you do that? Why would you pay the same amount of money to a place that it's expecting and has shown in the past and has solidified themselves as having tens of thousands of people and pay the same for a show that has much, much less in a venue that holds much, much less? That's from a dealer's point of view. I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, so that's something to stick in the back of your head when you're looking at this $600 price tag, uh, just to get in. And if I rem remember correctly, this doesn't even include like autographs and, and, and stuff like that, which BotCon, if you, if you thought about it, they had the, um, what was that the golden ticket, which included all that. Um, now this also has a package if I remember correctly, that includes all that. Is that correct? Did you look at this, Don? Uh, no, I, I have. I, I've read the basic information on the admission and what you got, and pretty much just said, "I'm out." And I think a, a vast majority of us have. Now, you know, I, I, we're we're running long on time here because we went really long on the. Uh, on the sun surge, sun streaker thing. But, but that's okay because it was important. Yeah. Uh, but well, the gist of this is, and I think everyone here can agree, is I think they're really, really trying for San Diego Comic Con, New York Comic Con prices at a BotCon level attendance. Attendance, yeah. Um, there, well, and and like. I believe it was Daniel said on episode 247, you know, they've got to, they, they're, they're a business and they've got to make money. The, nobody's faulting them for that. But what they're offering is not congruent with the pricing. And a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I didn't want to make this segment a, a, a bitch session about the prices. Well, it's not really a bashing. You're not uh, bashing. Well, you're just, you're just well, showing the facts. Well, we're just trying, we're just trying to find the value for our our, our this listeners, is, our viewers. Exactly. This, well, this is this is also something. Like I said at the top of the uh, at the top of the topic, it's not anything new. People were were bitching about the prices of BotCon for the last fifteen damn years. You sure. know, oh, it's so expensive. I don't want to pay three hundred and fifty dollars to go to Botcon. Well, you got a ten, uh, you, uh, for the three hundred and fifty dollars. You got, or let's say four hundred. We'll round it up here. You got uh, admission to the show. You got attendance to all the panels. You got the cosplay. You got the dealer room, and you got a really awesome set of toys. Exactly. You know, um, with this, you don't really get a whole lot. Uh, and as a Transformer fan, you're not getting much at all. So uh, the, it's the age-old argument that 
people people aren't are, are going to complain no matter what. They're still complaining about the prices, but now that that complaint is a lot more valid, in look, my opinion. Look, I can tell well, you right now. I, I, want I remember talk. when gas I want was eighty-eight cents. Wait, 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 wait. I want Don to talk. I was going to say is eighty-eight cents, and I bitch no matter how high it is or how low it is because I remember it at eighty-eight cents. So I'm going to bitch. Seven. Okay. Uh, being the attendee at BotCon for the, all the years that I was, this is what my overall general thoughts are on HasCon, and I, I just want to say this so I can sum up my feelings. One, I'm glad they're trying it. Like you, Doron, I hope it's a success. One, they're head two, they're having it in Rhode Island. I don't know how much traffic they're planning on drawing in September for families after school has started. Two, these prices are negating any chance of a family with them looking for Let's this Let's say you got four kids. This, this is going to be, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> this, this, this is supposed to be a family destination, a family event, a family, whatever they were calling it. As you, you would think, but yes, go ahead. Yeah. The average family cannot go to this. We knew this was not going to be a replacement for BotCon. We knew that. And it's we're not expecting it to be. Mm. But what we're seeing is all of the worst parts of pricing and structure from mm. a lot of the BotCons all rolled into one package that is trying to be everything to everybody but is nothing to anybody. Because it's not affordable, we don't know. Again, they may there may be more information coming, which will help clarify what the fandoms can expect, what the pony <laughs> fandom can expect. Everything that's not magic and Dungeons and Dragons is still out in the ether on a lot of this stuff. We don't know any of the exclusives or things like that. This show, it's not meant for it's not meant for the botcon people. Hasbro knows. We are, we are not Hasbro's target audience. We've all said this many times before. But they do know we exist. Or otherwise, mm -hmm. right. we wouldn't be getting this. We wouldn't be getting the, these these collector-focused product lines. And you're holding and up Titan Returns Octane. And, yeah, thank you. Sorry. And <laughs> they have not shown us, like, okay... BotCon people, we know you don't have a BotCon anymore. Here's the reason you should come. We're not expected to be catered to exclusively, but they know we're here. We know they know. Sorry, I'm getting a little excited. It's all right. We, we know they know that we spend money. They have given us nothing to justify these admission prices, the travel prices, or anything. Well, I'm... this. This is a farce of a show, and that I do not ex see how they expect this to come out of the gate as a success, <laughs> being this structurally dumb. Yeah. I'm going to let Brett say something real quick, and then I'm going to sum it up, and then we'll wrap. Brett, uh, say something real quick about this. You trying to get me real quick? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um. Bullshit. That's what I'm going to say. Because, um, sorry, hate to say that, but that's not what this is about. Um, it's going to be successful. Hascon will be successful because you're looking at the biggest brony turnout, the biggest Magic the Gathering turnout, the biggest uh, Dungeons and Dragons, whatever. Everyone's finally getting a little bit of what we've had this whole time. We are spoiled. We just are. So everyone's getting a little piece. So they're all going to come to it. So they're going to have good numbers. They're going to make the, the quotas that they You're want. You're beating on your table and they, again. Huh? You're beating on your table again. Is this any better? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I get... I get. Okay. Hands behind the back. It, it It's going to be successful. It, it's not going to be BotCon. And it's not going to be BotCon for a couple of years. Because... Everyone else is involved. Everyone else is getting their turn. And whether you like it or not, that's what Hasbro looks at. They're not looking at our little bitty market. 
and in in Transformers, the the actual little part that is the collector. They're looking at the big market of the bronies, like I, every all the other things I've said. So it's going to make money. It's going to be fine. We're going to be a couple of years before Hasbro gets it in their head that Transformers is big enough to have their own show. In the meantime, I we thought have to we've be proved at that already. <laughs> but but my point being is, is he's saying they hope that they do well. They are going to do well. They're just not going to do well for us. Yeah, that's my point. My my thoughts on it are that is that okay for six hundred dollars for a single person to go might be somewhat doable for some people. There are those fans out there that have that kind of money. I don't, but there are some fans out there that have that kind of money. They can go. They might get a few uh, Transformers items out of this, uh, and. But there's there's not going to be, we know for a fact, there's not going to be BotCon level uh, interaction or uh, availability of product uh, at this show. We know that because there's not going to be any, uh, there's not going to be any vintage items there or, or very few. There's not going to be any of the smaller dealers. Definitely not going to be any third party stuff there, you know. Not like there's a lot of third party stuff at Botcon, but you know all the all the ancillary stuff that the cool stuff that you know like He Man and and Power Rangers and stuff that's not going to be there. That is not going to be there. So what you're going to go if you're a Transformers fan, and let's say for me the big draw for me would be the dealer room like y'all talked about in episode two forty seven, and the exclusives. Okay. I'm pretty sure that the exclusives for this will probably be available online either during or after the show or both. I yes. can pick it up for a whole lot less than $600 just to uh, just to go in the front door, let alone getting there and staying there and eating there and all of that. And, and if it's not the same as uh, SDCC or New York Comic Con, I would be amazed. Yeah, uh, the thing. My my point is, is that I'm not going to go. Or, or uh, the uh, the average Transformer fan that would go to BotCon or TFCon, I honestly think this this show is not for you. And uh, if if you want to go, and I, and and I know Daniel's going, so TFYLP will will be represented there. Uh, but it's. It's not. It's not something for the general Transformer fan. If you if you're a fan of Transformers only, like me, it's it's not it's not offering enough for me for the price. Well, um, but but I, just, I also I, agree that yes, it would as long as you're willing to pay the price. And I, I, I yeah. My big thing, Doron, is is basically I don't know who they're trying to target this to. Because it's it's not doable for a lot of families well, based think, on price and I the time. It's, it's just right there in the name, super fan. I and and we decide, we defined this uh, several episodes back. You know what is a super fan? Mm -hmm. But I think Hasbro's definition of super fan and our definition that we uh, that we came to a consensus on of super fan is way different. Yeah. You know, well, you're looking at a, a difference of a conservative as opposed to a conglomerate idea. Exactly. Yeah, but, so. um, you know, th that's our two cents on, on the pricing and whether or not we think that this show will be a viable replacement for BotCon. I can tell you right now, uh, it was kind of, kind of questionable uh, a couple episodes in 247. Now I can say without a, without a shadow of a doubt, this is not a replacement for BotCon by any means. Not 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 the same. No, uh, you're uh, comparing uh, apples to oranges. Right. Uh, and, 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 and remember and what, what happened was these prices. That's yeah. what's that's what changed the deal. Right, but but just remember, and I, I'll I'll say this again: Is this an option to BotCon? Well, sure it is. Is it a Viable option, viable and feasible. 
I, I don't think so because I look at the prices that are placed upon the dealers, and as I said before, um, you know, the trickle down theory. You know what 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 starts at the top's got to go down to the bottom, which means the prices of the items have to go up, and, and no one wants to pay that. But unfortunately, that's the way it is, and I think you're going to get less, and it'll cost you more. And I'll say it again: I think we we were spoiled, so we're going to start looking towards smaller conventions, uh, more local conventions, and that's the way it's going to be until they figure this that that this isn't going to work. I'm sorry, but I'm viewing Hascon like a Michael Bay Transformers movie. I went in to Hascon, no expectations, waiting for them to show me, went in with no expectations, and I'm leaving with the exact same thing because they have shown me nothing. As a fan, as a fan of Hasbro products, as a BotCon fan, as a collector in general, I'm only glad. The <laughs> only thing I am glad is there ain't visionary shown at this thing because then I would then I would have to freaking go. But, but, other than that, but, but, but listen, listen, Don. Even though what you're saying is correct, there are still some people who love the 2007 movie and so on, and they use that as their own. We've talked I, about this before like as their being their G one. Hang on, hang on. But everyone across the world can say that when you increase the cost, it has to come down to the consumer. No one likes that. No one. And I think that's the bottom line. They definitely cut out the, the they definitely cut out the people that travel from say the UK and Japan and stuff. I don't see how they could afford it. It's it's, it's ridiculous. Just, ridiculous. Well, that's why I don't see who they're trying to target this to because I don't know. Even even the super fans. I'm confused. Yeah, I, yeah, I really am. They're charging so much to get in the door, you can't afford to get there. That doesn't work. Well, if, and I, and if, I'll say this much, and I even thought about this, and I thought, you know what? If if I went ahead and milked the money to, to to pay for everything, I would have to increase my prices, and I'd probably be the only one or one of the only ones with G one. So I would 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 clean up. But I'll be honest with you, I thought, you know what? All that would do, and, and I'm I'm being a little selfish here. All that would do is tarnish the name, my name of Mega Toy Fan, and saying that we sell things at a higher price at that convention, and I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Basically, so give, that, give, that's why I won't go. Yeah, I give Hascon one Massey attack. <laughs> well, but, you know what? I give him two. Go ahead, get him. Well, I mean, you, you got to look at it from this uh, from this point of view too. Um, Six hundred dollars a person to go in the front door. You're not going to have a lot of people because of that. It was established uh, in 2007 that the uh, the Civic Center, the Duck and Donut Center, where this is going to be held at, is not a big venue. So you're, uh, we already know that this thing's not going to be huge to begin with. Right. But, uh, how much are they going to have there? So well, you think about it. It's smaller. And how many venues are they going to have? It's not just not not just Transformers. So I mean, or brands, yes. yeah. How many brands? The are brands going to are going to be so much. I mean, it's, I just, it's just not I, worth I, it. I don't even see going as a uh, attendee. Mm-mm. I'm not even going to go because it's it just doesn't make sense. Daniel, we we look forward to your review on it. Well, with that being said, I think we've beat this to death. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us this evening. Uh, again, sorry for the pre-recorded, but I just won't be available next week and uh, and until Brett gets his computer fixed. It's a crap. Yeah, uh, we, we right. can't do that. Uh, check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash TFYLP. On our Twitter at TFYLP. Uh, and, of course, patreon.com slash TFYLP. If you love what we do and want to support what we're doing, uh, go on there and give us a little bit of, little bit of dough. Uh, um, Brett? Also, um, like, share, subscribe. Absolutely. Make sure that if, if it's something that you liked, make sure that you say something about it. Even though we weren't live, we're going to listen to it. And if it's something really, really important, we'll bring it up on the next show. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we will see you next time on Transformers for your listening pleasure. For Headmaster Dawn, Megamus, 
an absent proto man because I don't know. I guess he got lost in traffic. Um, he is stuck in traffic. <laughs> he got stuck in traffic. Uh, stuck in traffic. But I am Weird Wolf. <laughs> we will see you next time on TFYLP. Good night, everybody. Take it easy.